Are you applying to roles in bioinformatics and just getting rejected right at the beginning before you've even had a chance to go to interview? It's so annoying and today I'm gonna explain to you guys what are the reasons why you're not even getting through that first hurdle when applying for these bioinformatic roles. Welcome to Genomics with Georgia. I'm Georgia. I work in genomics, omics, bioinformatics, data science, and I share on this channel everything I've learned in terms of getting into the field and trying to point you guys in the right direction to help you get into this sphere. So in today's video, I'm going to give you several reasons as to why you're not even getting through the door, why you're getting rejected. So hopefully when those rejections come in, you can feel a little bit better about the situation and hopefully learn how to, if you can, change the way that that unfolds for you. Number one, the first reason why you're getting rejected for a job road now by the way uh, and I cannot hear myself think anymore the first reason why you are getting rejected when you're applying for these jobs is because the job never existed so when I was first applying I had no idea about this until I got in the workplace but a lot of jobs that are advertised aren't actually trying to target you to get the job. A lot of companies, if they want to promote someone internally, or they've just got several candidates internally that they, you know, they want to fill a position, legally, they have to advertise that role to the general public rather than just kind of giving it to someone internally. So sometimes if you see a job ad online and you apply for it, that job was never really available to you. And you know, yes, on paper, if there was a better candidate that came in, then they'd obviously have to interview them as well. But nine times out of 10, if you have someone in mind for a job, that's just how you give them a job at your company. So if you get rejected and you think, do you know what, I was so suited for that. I had all the right expertise. Like why on earth have I not even had a chance to shine an interview? It could be because the job never existed in the first place. So if you get that rejection, always remember that the job might not have been real. Reason number two why you are getting rejected at the first hurdle is because of AI. AI filtered you out and said that you are not good enough. And what I mean in this sense is when you apply to roles and specifically ones at bigger companies, there'll be AI screens because if they have thousands of applicants, you don't want a human to have to sit through all of those. So there might be a form of AI that's going to screen out a bunch of those applicants. So the human beings don't have to even look at those. And that's why you might be getting rejected right at that first hurdle. Now, there's two kind of main reasons why that you might get screened out at this certain stage. So reason A is because your application didn't have the keywords that that AI algorithm was looking for. So say it's a job in data science and they want you to apply machine learning and statistical modeling. If you don't have machine learning and statistical modeling in your cover letter or CV, they can just filter you out. So having those keywords in your CV and in your cover letter from the job description is so, so important to make sure you don't just get knocked out at this stage. And then reason B is because you might not fit the essential requirements. Essential requirements are obviously put on job ads because that's the bare minimum that that employer is looking for. And say for example, it says PhD is a essential requirement and you've applied for a job and you don't have a PhD, you might get rejected at the first hurdle and you don't get a chance to prove yourself because you don't meet the essential requirements. It's not a reflection of your talent or your worthiness to interview, it's just the screening process. And you need to remember that, yes, you are really important to yourself, but that company has maybe thousands of people to look through. And if they can cull that down so they can spend decent time actually evaluating some candidates, then some places have to do that. So don't let it get you down. It's just the way it is. Reason number three why you're just getting flat out rejected with no chance to shine is because you're not applying to the right roles. 
So it's really easy to just send off that CV and cover letter to every job you see that has the word bioinformatics, genomic data science, that's in the job title, send off an application. Well, this does work and that's because you really need to tailor your applications to a specific job and you need to make sure that that job is within your realm. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a massive advocate for applying for things that you're not fully qualified for. It's how I got in the field, it's how most people get their jobs. So you never need to meet all of the requirements to do a job, but you do need to be pitching yourself at the right level. So you can't be applying for a principal role leading a team of bioinformaticians if you've never been a bioinformatician yourself. So you just really need to make sure that you read those job ads, really understand the level of that role, because yes, job titles can have different names and different prefixes, but they'll have a kind of level of responsibility, a level of competency, and you need to make sure that you're pitching yourself to the correct job. So that's another reason why they're just straight up rejecting you because you're dreaming, well you're not even dreaming too high, you're, you're just like, you don't know where you're looking and you're just shooting your shot. And it might work, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna be stopped at the gate. Reason number four, why you might be getting rejected right at the first hurdle. Yes, AI bots can screen you out, but sometimes humans do look at that CV before they then decide to, you know, take you to the first stage of an interview. And if a human is looking at your CV, this can also be a problem if your CV doesn't make sense. And I've seen this many times when I've been reviewing people's CVs for them. <laughs> it's a really common mistake to assume that the person who's reading your CV can imagine and understand and have the context of that experience. So what I mean by this is if you just go straight into these points about your masters and your project and all this, that and the other and this internship, that reader doesn't know the quantifiable things that help you create a picture of that experience. So one really important thing to do when you're describing your experiences on your CV is to contextualize them. When you first begin and say you were doing a master's project in a research group as part of your studies, there's no point just going into being like, oh, I did, I did this and this and this. You need to illustrate the scenario. So, you know, just because you've got a supervisor's name there doesn't mean that that reader is going to know that domain, their expertise, like they might not know your supervisor, even though you obviously know them really well. So you want to make sure that you say what domain was the lab? You know, was it a multidisciplinary lab? Was it a completely computational lab? How big was the lab? How much support did you get? How long was the experience? So it's really important to contextualize things before you then go into the next stage. And then here's my next thing. You really need to make sure, especially at this entry level stage, your CV makes sense and your CV has your skills on it. When you're entry level and you're trying to get your foot in the door, you're selling your potential. And I've said this on videos before, but you need to make sure that you really lay out for the reader. What are the skills that you have already? And don't just hide them in like paragraphs in your experiences. Have a whole section that's dedicated to your skills. Put them in bold when you're describing your experiences. If you've done extra courses and extra learnings, have them on your CV. And I kid you not, if you go back and think really hard about all the different like extra learning things you've done, you'll be able to pull out so many things. So please, 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 yeah, put these on your CV because the reason why you get rejected at the beginning is if a human's read your CV and your CV doesn't make any sense and it doesn't tell a story and it doesn't sell yourself, they're not gonna waste time interviewing you. So, so important to get that right. And then finally, reason number five why you're getting rejected, and this is such a pet peeve of mine, um, is because your online presence doesn't match up with your application. So what I mean by this is if you have suddenly decided to get into bioinformatics, or maybe in the last year you've decided this is what you want to do. If your online presence says otherwise, it just looks a bit illegitimate. And if someone's been able to look you up on the internet, which we all can do now, you know, and that doesn't align with what you've said in your application, it just doesn't 
feel right to the interviewer. So say for example, you've been trialing out lots of different career paths, maybe you've done some internships in a different industry, maybe you've um, you know done an online course on something else, and then you decided you wanna do bioinformatics. Great, love that for you, love that for us, come and join in the fun. But if you have a LinkedIn bio that says, I am a passionate, um, oh I'm a really passionate person interested in law and I'm looking for internships in patent attorney really looking to like further my legal experience but then you're applying for a bioinformatics role it's like why would someone give you a shot there's not many shots why would someone give you a shot or saying elsewhere on the internet that you're interested in something else so just really make sure that you revisit your LinkedIn bio make sure it's up to date often like you're applying through roles on LinkedIn and your profile's linked to your application. Recruiters will send over your LinkedIn, your LinkedIn site to people and employers when they're deciding whether to interview you now. So you've got to make sure that that is up to date and it's telling the same narrative that your application is telling. And what do we mean by this, guys? You need to be authentic. <laughs> if your application's authentic and your online presence is up to date, and authentic then this isn't going to be a barrier but it's definitely a reason why you're getting rejected at the front door so there we have it guys five whole reasons why you are getting shut out right at the beginning so make sure you really take these tips on board when you're applying for those roles so if you do get flat out rejected it genuinely might not be your fault <laughs> it might be the the job just didn't exist but have a look at the things I've mentioned today and make sure you really try and implement them when you're applying for those first jobs because it's very, very important because you wanna give yourself the best chance possible. Thanks for joining me today on another video with Genomics with Georgia. If you've liked this content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, it really helps me, and I will see you again on the next one. Bye.